Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, Papa Porus here, playing some Guild of Dungeoneering. I consider this the first video in the series, the previous one, which is longer than I would have liked, had a lot of explanation of how all the stuff works. I assume you know how to play it. If you don't, then feel free to watch that first video or look it up in a wiki, but here we're just going to get right to cracking. So, for the first 50 gold you get for that opening mission, I like to just unlock a new class, because the chump kind of sucks, and I'm going to go with what is a fan favorite for a lot of players, the Bruiser. So the Bruiser is not a high damage in class. In fact, the Bruiser has only four cards that do any damage, and they're all one physical damage apiece, which is limiting and can sometimes get you totally screwed. But the Bruiser is a trait, which is always fun, and this trait's a nifty one. It's spiky. So when you fully block an attack, you deal one damage. And the Bruiser has some nice block cards. In addition, this card right here, which is the same as the Crush 1 card, is potentially going to enable some really big swings, because if the enemy deals one physical damage and you block it, then you block the damage, and you deal a damage, and you deal a damage for the actual damage on the card. It's like a three health swing. Like, instead of you taking a damage, um, you actually deal two damage. So it's a big, big, I guess it's not really a three swing, because you were going to deal one damage anyway. Anyway, it's a two damage swing, because instead of taking a damage, you deal uh, a damage, and the difference between negative one and plus one is two. But any hoodle, let's go ahead and unlock this class. I'm not above unlocking other classes. Um, I'm not a super big fan of most of the tier one classes, which is not super surprising, considering that they're pretty bad. They're tier one classes, after all. Um, but if we do die, and I happen to have 50 gold, I will uh, unlock one of the other classes that is, you know, tolerably not unfun to play. Okay, so this is the first real mission. Our goal here is to kill the Rat King. And this is actually pretty, I mean, it's the first mission. Um, so it's a pretty easy mission as far as boss fights go because you can just come up to the Rat King at your leisure. A lot of other boss fight missions, you have a time limit or something obnoxious like that. But here you just get to casually go and kill the dude. Um, so one of the things that's annoying about this game is the game does not cheat to give you proper dungeon cards. So like right now, um, I can actually, I'd love to put this corridor in here but I can't because I'm not connected to it, but I don't have anything that would actually connect me to the main area. This is a fountain room. The thing about fountain rooms is they have a fountain in them. It can be either good or bad. And the good thing gives you a usually not very big deal bonus in the next fight, whereas the bad thing gives you a usually really awful penalty in the next fight. So I uh, typically am not going to play fountains unless I absolutely have to. What we're going to do here is just play a corridor and put a giant bat in here. I guess I might as well do this. We'll, um, we'll make this room here and put a giant bat over here. So we're going to go ahead and start our first fight. I should be able to beat this giant bat. Although the bruiser is a little bit of a tricky one versus the bats. Because the bruiser has just one magic blocking damage. And any time the bat plays this card, the bat actually gets ahead. So here, for example, I'm going to block... I could actually block the spook to deal a damage to the bat with my spiky ability. But I know the bat has more drains in the deck. So I'm not going to waste this card which would just be blocked. I'll just waste this physical blocking card, take a damage, and wait to block um, one of the other drains with this nice try chump. We're going to go ahead and play this. It's unblockable, so we each take a damage. I am a damage behind, so I'm hoping to get a big swing with a blocking card. Uh, okay, this is would be a good time to play that, but that's unblockable, so we're going to go ahead and play. Oh, and I might just die here, which would be hilarious! It's possible. The bat is really not a good enemy for the bruiser because of these magic damaging cards. So the bat sadly is at one hit point and I'm at the mercy of what the bat draws next. It's an unblockable card. Yeah, the bat does not have any blockable physical damage. So the bruiser is a very bad choice to fight against bats and I suffer the consequences for it. I probably should have just fought this rat instead. Okay, so uh, this is a really great start here. We uh, kick off our first mission by dying versus the very first monster, but that is just a lesson in the difficulty of this game because um, you do have to keep in mind that this game is not completely easy. It's very cartoony and friendly looking, but it's got a little bit of bite to it. So in that level, given that I was a bruiser, had I known the rat stack and realized, oh, the rat has no blockable physical attacks, I should have just not put the rat down. Since there was no time limit on that mission, I should have waited for a better monster or just gone up to fight the rat. Now, this introduces another mechanic, which is that when you have a dungeoneer die, you actually have to wait a, like a dungeon before a dungeoneer of that type comes back. And this is a change from how the game was initially released. And I think it's a good change because it encourages you to play with other classes. Right now, though, I have no other classes except for this chump 
who is uh, nursing an early stage flesh wound battle scar and therefore has one hit point less than usual. So we'll see how that works for me. I'm interested actually to see what the flesh wound evolves into. So here we have a really weird setup. I am actually going to put this room down. We don't have any way to connect up here, but that's fine because there's no time limit. I'll put a rat in here. The rat does have this penalty ability that if it's in a dead end, it has one fewer hit point, which would have actually let me win the previous fight if I'd had a dead end to place. So now we've got Cower, which is, you know, a really good card. The Bruiser would have loved to have one of these cards. I can block this drain, not take a damage and prevent the healing, which actually was important because it let the bat uh, heal up from death. I'm going to play a lucky hit here. One of the damages will be blocked. The other one will get through. The reason I'm not playing um, my Cower is I wanted to save Cower for this drain so that the bat wouldn't actually heal from that drain. I am becoming really well acquainted with the bats starting deck here because we seem to be fighting a lot of bats in the early stages. And despite having one fewer hit point than I'm supposed to, I managed to kill this bat and I probably would have actually lost that fight if the bat had not been in a dead end. Okay, so we have a choice now between Swift 1, I do not like the Swift series very much, Growth 1, I don't like the Growth series either, but the first couple of growth cards are okay. What I actually don't like are the later stage growth cards. I think they're just not very good compared to other cards, later stage things. Okay, so we could now play a level two enemy. And you know what? Let's friggin' do it. So this one has six hit points. This one has six hit points in Fury. I'm gonna go ahead and do the one that does not have Fury. So what Fury means is that once the enemy is at half health or fewer, all of his physical attacks do one extra damage. And since I'm not a very heavy damaging guy, it's very difficult for me to um, prevent that from being a problem. Like, the way you beat fairy monsters is by, like, doing a bunch of damage to them at once, which I can't really do very easily. So Ratman does not have fury. Presumably, that means the Ratman has better cards. So here's Headbutt. It deals two damage to me and one damage to itself. We'll play our new Rekindle card to heal one of these damages and also do a damage. So that gets us a little bit ahead. Okay, sadly, I don't have a block, but we'll do our lucky hit here. So now this guy's down to one hit point. As long as it can't do three damage to me in one hit, I should be fine. And okay, not much options there, but we kill it off. And now we're going to be level three, because we're level two, it's level two. And if you kill a monster of your level or higher, then you level up. Now these are level two items, you can see, so they're a little bit better. We got crush one and fire one, though it is a head item, which would mean I replace my paper crown. This I don't like, because I don't like the swift skill tree. And the Glyph, I like quite a bit. Holy and Arcane are great skills, so I don't have any yet, but we're going to go ahead and start those off. That black symbol, by the way, means you draw a card. And that's really important because in this game, unlike other deck building roguelikes, as you've seen, you do not discard your hand at the end of the turn. And so anytime you draw a card, it kind of like permanently increases your hand size. Okay, so here we again have no way to connect in, but... Well, not without a fountain, but I'm just going to play this. If it's a bad fountain, it's all right, because um, the next enemy is a level one enemy, so I'm just hoping I can handle it. And we'll go ahead and connect up. Let me take a look at this Rat King. Was there, I think there's some weird... Yes, this person's a leader. So that means that it gets plus one hit point for every adjacent enemy, counting diagonals. So you really want to pass through this square and kill this Rat Man in particular before you get up to the Rat King so that the Rat King's health is reduced by one. So if I put a corridor here, then um, I basically have to like walk a long way around to get back to this square to kill this rat, which I will... Is there a point in doing that? There's really no point in doing that, so I'm just not gonna bother with it. Let's just put a Rat Man in here. This won't level me up because I'm already level three, but it will give me another level two item and hopefully I can build up in the Holy or Arcane trees before I uh, fight the final boss. So let's do Rekindle. So I take one damage and he takes two damage. Net, that's a good thing for me. We'll go ahead and do our new Mind Strike. So we each take a damage, but I draw a card. So I can maybe draw into some, some of my good stuff. This is a very strong card. It's two physical damage and one physical block. So these punches do nothing. I guess I will do a Holy Seal. So I take no damage because I take one and then I heal for one in a net. And here we'll be aggressive, let's punch him. So we each take one damage, except he also deals a damage to himself, and as long as I don't take three damage, I'm good. Okay, so now, in fact, no matter what I do, this guy's gonna die, because he's gonna deal two damage to me, which will not kill me, and he'll deal one damage to himself, which will kill him, but we'll block one of the damage for theme's sake, because why would I want to take more damage? 
Okay, so here we have the glyph again. If you take an item you already have, like equipped, you just immediately sell it and get gold equal to the level of the item. We can get this headband, which I like a lot. I am not super concerned about losing rekindle. I do like holy and fire. And now we're at holy two, which is two magic damage and one magic block. Male coif is interesting. It gives you two health, but you also add two stupidity cards to your deck. It is pretty bad. So I'm gonna just grab this headband. I don't mind losing that crown. We'll be able to fight as many monsters as we want and polish things off to get to a good stage. Okay, so I don't have anything I want to connect in here. I really want to get to this square, which means I want to hook through here, and I cannot do that. I can, again, hook up through here, but I don't want to. So we'll just put a gold pouch there, and we're going to fight this rat. We have a fountain now. In effect, it's a bad one. Combustion. What this does is it makes is it makes you and your opponent take one damage at the beginning of every round. Now, actually, that is probably the least bad fountain in the game, because at least it affects you and your opponent at this in the same way. Um, other fountains can do things like add stupidity to your deck, not let you see what your opponent's card is. Like, it's pretty bad stuff that can happen. Okay, so we can get a newspaper hat, which I do not like at all. The barrel is health, but with a stupidity attached, which is weird because you can just get plus one health with no stupidity attached. And I guess that's what I'm doing because the other stuff is just total junk. And now um, we're just trying to get up to this rat. Once again, I can only go up this way, but not that way. So we're just going to pass the turn. I could have just fought another level two monster, but I'm going to have time to do that later. I would really just like to um, get a hook up through here. Please, game, please. There we go. Okay. So I could actually put this up here. The issue is, yeah, it's fine. We'll do this. I don't know. If I, I could have put it here and then hooked up this way and waited for another card to hook in, but we'll just roll with the punches. Um, I guess we'll fight another rat man. And if I pick up some treasure later, I can put it there to make sure I go up that way. Actually, could I have connected to the boss already? I don't remember. Oops. Anyway, let's go ahead and do a mind strike to draw an extra card. So I take two and he takes two. Nothing much to do with, with this bite because it's unblockable, so we each take one. And now this. If I play this, he, I, deals, I deal two to him, he deals one to himself, so he'll die. You just have to make sure that you don't die at the same time. I do not die at the same time, so we're fine. And the rat man goes down. So now that we've got some equipment, it's getting more and more consistent that we can kill these level two enemies without much problems. This is unfortunately a pretty crappy pick. I don't want crush or growth. I don't want to um, lose my offhand in this male coif we have seen before. So I could take this just because they're not terrible cards. Yeah, I'll take it. It's fine. It should probably make things better overall. Because your deck is so small in this game, it's not as big of a deal to... Um, what's your face? To, like, add more cards to your deck. And I like that a lot. It's, it's frustrating in other roguelikes where you often get cards as rewards, but the best thing is to not take the reward. And I, like, I get that that's a skillful thing, but at the same time, it's more fun, in my opinion, to be able to like take your actual rewards that you're getting. Okay, I'm saving the Holy Seal because I want to make sure that when I use it, it really matters. Um, okay, so now this is actually doing three damage, note, because Fury got turned on because he dropped to half health, but I'm hoping I can kill him next time. It is a close thing. It's a close thing, but we're going to go ahead and do a Holy Seal. This will block one, heal me for one. But remember, that was three damage, not two. So if I had just casually played a damaging attack, I would have lost. Okay. I do not want Stupidity. I do not want Swift. I already have that thing, so I guess we're just taking two gold. Okay. Finally, we can connect up in there. Uh, I just have to make sure that I put some treasure up here to get to that rat instead of this rat. So if you want to play this completely optimally, ooh, I discard a card. That's really, really bad to discard a card. Even though I'm wasting the magic block, I might have to discard it anyway, so I'm just going to let one of my other things get discarded, and now I only have a hand size of two. Okay, there's no point um, playing the bash because this bite was unblockable. But this, I will do that. Yes, I will block that and deal a damage, and hopefully I can kill it with magic damage next time. Yeah, it's perfect. I mean, this rat is only a level one enemy, so it wasn't particularly threatening. Okay, I'm gonna take some gold. I could actually get gold instantly by taking this because I'm already wearing it. 
But what taking gold lets me do is if I hadn't drawn this massive gem, I could have put it here to guarantee that it went up, my character went up that way instead of going this way. So now I don't need to do anything else. I could fight more level twos to try to find another holy item, but maybe this rat will give it to us. And if not, I think I should still be able to kill the boss. Though we'll see, this would be a hilariously long video if I end up dying after all this work to the rat boss. Okay, so this is the biggest card for this rat man. We're just gonna go ahead and do two magic damage to him. I do have a health advantage. So a good rule of thumb is if you have a health advantage versus the enemy, you're fine to trade damage. But if you have a health disadvantage, you wanna try to play more of a slow game where you don't take any damage, but the enemy does. Obviously it's not always possible to put that into effect, but here we could just waste the magic block and do two damage to him and kill him. Okay. So, Cooking Pot is interesting. I lose my Holy 2, but I gain a Crush 2, which isn't too unblockable physical damage. No, I think I'd rather keep the Magic Block. And I'm pretty sure I don't want that. And I'm pretty sure I don't want that. Okay, so we're just taking some extra gold. One quirk of this game is that if there's any gold on the final boss, you do not actually pick it up after killing the final boss. Basically, if you complete the mission objective, you don't pick up anything on the square, which is strange. But on the other hand, it's... Such a small amount of gold, it's not particularly significant. All right, let's see if we can go ahead and kill this boss. I would have liked to have a weapon that gave holy arcane, or, or arcane, but I didn't. So hopefully it doesn't come back to bite me. We have the same amount of health. I'm actually taking a, a health disadvantage here, doing only one to his two, but I'm hoping I can make it up later because I do have a decent amount of blocking in here. Okay, so there we go. We made it up. So now we're equal. It's a little, little bit tricky still because we cannot tie. We have to kill him and still have some health left over, but there we get another advantage in health. This one's interesting. So it is magic block, but physical damage. So we'll do a bash. This makes it so that we each deal one to each other. And now it's a bit risky because if he deals two to me next turn, I am screwed. Luckily he did just one. So I can kill him off. And we successfully complete the very first mission after quite a lot of effort put into it with the chump. Who is missing one health? So hey, you know what? I'll take it. Okay, so we got a bunch of gold for this one, and our Battle Scar Mystical start with Arcane 1. Not bad! I like that a lot. So if I had this, then when I got the Arcane 1 skill, I would have actually gotten an Arcane 2 card. I love all the Arcane cards, so this would have been pretty nifty to have. But this is actually a new Battle Scar, because I still have that Flesh Wound making me lose one hit point. Any hoodle, that's it for that. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. Please like and or subscribe. This trophy room is inconsequential. And when uh, we come back, we'll go ahead and do our next mission. Take care.